Hello. My name is Olivia Stone. I am the assistant curator of prints, drawings, and photographs here at the Worcester Art Museum. And today I want to talk to you about our wonderful group of European portrait paintings from the early 20th century on view in our exhibition, Watercolors Unboxed. Now, as you visit the exhibition and walk around, you will notice that most of the works on display are by American artists, and most of them are landscapes. This one section of European drawings really bucks that trend. The avant-garde artists at the time were really looking at the human figure, reinventing it in unique ways, uh, revisiting the history of art and non-Western art and bringing that into their practice. All of that is visible in these watercolors that were coming from the centers of the avant-garde in Europe at the time, such as Paris or Dresden. I want to focus on our wonderful watercolor by the Italian Jewish artist Amadeo Medigliani here, his 1915 work, Head of a Woman. Modigliani was born in the port city of Livorno in Italy, and he studied plein air painting um, with local artists, but really had his sights set more on the avant-garde and on Paris. He moves to Paris around 1906, finds himself in the bohemian neighborhood of Montmartre, which is famous today for its cabaret Moulin Rouge. He ends up living in an artist commune that was known as the Bateau Lavoir, or the wash boat, named after the laundry washing boats that used to exist on the Seine River, which would creak when they moved. The Bateau Lavoir was a piano factory, very old and decrepit, in which artists were essentially squatting, hence the nickname. When he was working and living in the Bateau Lavoir, Modigliani meets other young avant-garde artists who found themselves in Paris, such as sculptor Constantine Brancusi, known for his elongated forms, and Pablo Picasso. Now, Picasso at the time was working on his proto-Cubist painting, The Demoiselle d'Avignon, which was inspired by African masks, such as the Dan masks from the Ivory Coast. These long features also find their way into Modigliani's work as well as ancient Aegean cultures such as the Cycladic figurines, which had these very elongated, almost triangular faces. Those particular figurines would have been polychrome painted, but today the paint has all worn off and you are left with these sort of blank, oval, lidless eyes. Now at the time, um, artists were unaware that those works were polychrome. So when he saw those blank eyes, he was really captivated by them. And you can see here in this work, the sort of empty oval eye inspired by those sculptures as well as the African masks. Modigliani manipulates watercolor in some very interesting ways in this portrait. Now here he used what is called a dry brush technique, which is just how it sounds. He used very little water on the brush and instead pushed the pigment in these pulses down the side of the figure to kind of create almost a furry, warm, encompassing feel. Additionally, he used a very fine, almost pen-like mark to delineate the nose and lips. You can also see the graphite pencil marks in the woman's hair that are shining through a very thinly applied layer of a warm terracotta colored wash. These warm and flat fields of color are hallmarks of cubism. Tragically, Modigliani passes away very young in his mid-30s from meningitis, but what he leaves is a legacy of works that treat the figure in a dignified and fantastically new way. The incredible energy and creativity of the European avant-garde in this era is evident in each of these works in this section. I definitely encourage you to come on out before September 10th to take a close look at these wonderful works before they are boxed away again. Thanks so much for watching.